Monday, everybody! Before we jump in, I just want to make sure that you stick around until the end of the video because we are giving away a super rare photo of Walt Cunningham, who happens to be relevant in this week's newsflash. So, without further ado, let's jump into the Back to Space newsflash. On Friday, October 18th, NASA astronauts Christina Koch and Jessica Mier made history as they completed the first all-female team spacewalk. Yeah, it happened. The duo's mission was to replace a faulty battery on the orbiting laboratory. Fun fact, not only was the spacewalk all female, but the Capcom, the capsule communicator, was also female. This was a huge accomplishment for women, and even the President of the United States, Trump, hailed it by saying, quote, I just want to congratulate you. What you do is incredible. You're very brave people. I don't think I want to do it. I must tell you. And then he went on to say congrats on the historic walk. They responded by saying, this is really just us doing our jobs. Adding that she and Coke just happened to be the crew in orbit when the spacewalk was needed. At the same time, we recognize that this is a historic achievement and we do of course want to give credit to all those who came before us. There's been a long line of female scientists, explorers, engineers, and astronauts. We have followed in their footsteps to get us to where we are today. In other news, Sir Richard Branson, King of Virgin Galactic, unveils the new Under Armour spacesuits. These suits are for future passengers on Spaceship Two, Virgin Galactic sub orbital space plane, once space tourism flights begin, likely in 2020, that gear includes a base spacesuit, footwear, a training suit, and a limited edition astronaut jacket. <laughs> he unveiled the new trendy spacewear at an iFly skydiving venue with an incredible video. Speaking of fashion, on Tuesday, October 15th, NASA unveiled the spacesuits to be worn by the first woman on the moon, and also another spacesuit for the Orion mission. One called the Exploration Extravehicular Mobility Unit is a red, white, and blue suit designed to be worn by astronauts exploring the lunar surface, specifically at the moon's south pole the target for NASA's next crewed lunar landing. The second suit unveiled is the Orion Crew Survival System, which is a bright orange pressure suit that will be worn by astronauts when they launch into space on the Orion capsule and the return to Earth. The thing that is pretty exciting about this is that the traditional spacesuit in the Apollo program, as well as in the shuttle, is pretty clunky and difficult to move in. These new suits will allow astronauts to work with less discomfort and more mobility. Do I hear Moon Olympics? Moon triathlon, moon relay races, moon circuses, moon. Okay, I'll stop. Scientists are developing techniques to count great whales from space. The carcasses of 343 say whales were spotted on remote beaches in Patagonia, Chile in 2015. But this survey was conducted from planes and boats and carried out a couple weeks after the tragic deaths actually occurred. But analysis of high resolution satellite images have now identified many more sad bodies of whales. A new investigation published in the journal stated that it's not easy to see an object even if it's as big as a great whale. But the team believes the capability of modern satellites now makes this a practical task. The monitoring of whales from orbit is set to become a powerful tool to assess the state of the environment. Mars Insight, remember we did a little segment about the mole? Guess what? It's moving again. So. It, it's kind of moving. It has used a robotic arm to help the heat probe dig nearly two centimeters, which is kind of small, but it's pretty important because it means that NASA's new technique is working. So the mole is designed to dig as much as 16 feet underground to gauge the heat escaping the planet's interior. But the mole has managed to practically bury itself since it started to hammer in February 2019. Also, they found the soil is very, very strong and it's holding up the mole's progress. So it needs friction from surrounding soil to move. Without it, it's just gonna recoil from itself and just bounce in place like a bouncy castle, but in the Martian surface. The new technique is called pinning. If no other options exist, they would consider pressing the scoop down directly on top of the mole while trying to avoid the sensitive tether there. The tether provides power to and relays data from the instrument, so we don't wanna mess with that, but uh, we'll tune in next week to see if there's any new news about that. NASA has a new all-electric airplane. 
So studies have shown that commercial air travel account for four to nine percent of anthropogenic greenhouse gases that contribute to climate change. And if that's not bad enough, airplane emission is on the rise because of an increase in population and the increasingly globalized nature of our economy. So what do we do? Well, NASA has been pursuing the development of electric aircrafts in the past few decades. Much like reusable spacecraft and infrastructure, electric aircrafts are part of NASA's pursuit to make aerospace cheaper, more efficient, and less harmful to the environment. Their efforts bore fruit in the form of the X-57 Maxwell, the first all-electric experimental aircraft, which was recently delivered to NASA Armstrong Flight Research Center in Edwards, California. The delivery of this aircraft is a major milestone for the project since it means that NASA engineers can begin conducting ground tests. These will be followed by taxi tests, which will eventually lead to flight tests. This is amazing because that means that this will eventually lead to me going on vacation and it'll be cheap. I don't have to worry about it destroying my bank account, but also not destroying the Earth. The past. This week's history is based on Apollo 7 and its 51st anniversary. 51, the things you've seen. The launch date was October 11th, 1968. The landing date was October 22nd, 1968. The crew members were Wally Schirra, Don F. Eisel, and Walter Cunningham. Apollo 7 is considered the most successful launch of any of the rocket system. So successful, in fact, that the next mission went around the moon. Happy 51st anniversary to our friend and back to space astronaut, Walter Cunningham. Because this is a special week for us and for Walt, our giveaway will be... autographed photo of our own astronaut Walt Cunningham. If you would like to enter a contest, all you have to do is leave a comment below, be a subscriber of this channel, and we'll randomly select one comment as the winner of this amazing signed photo on next week's News Flash. Actually, last year, October 19th, 2018, the Back to Space team was in Texas to celebrate the anniversary of the Apollo 7 mission, and we announced the 25 Back to Space student ambassadors. The future. Women are hot this weekend because Bridenstine told reporters on Friday that NASA could very well see the first person on Mars to be a woman. NASA currently has no concrete plans for landing humans on Mars. The moon is the agency's first priority, but Bridenstine has said that the first crewed Mars landing could be sometime in the 2030s. Get ready, y'all. NASA wants to send a water sniffing rover to the lunar south pole in 2022. Right now, that rover called a Volatiles Investigation Polar Exploration Rover, Viper, is still a mission concept. If all goes well, the project could develop a long-lived mobile robot that could hunt for water and other volatiles near the south pole of the moon. And Viper has a head start, since the would-be mission builds on previous NASA development conducted as part of a project called Resource Prospector, which was axed in 2018. This time around, the rover would reflect the Artemis program, NASA's initiative to land humans, as we know, on the moon in 2024. This week's episode is sponsored by Space Fund. I was lucky enough to attend an event for them this past week, and they're doing some incredible stuff. Just to give you a little background, they are a venture capital for the future. They're investing in some amazing startup companies that are going to change the world we live in and pave the path for human exploration. Things such as communication, transportation, human factors, such as keeping humans alive in space and also on Earth, supplies, and energy. After attending the event, I can honestly say I'm thrilled to see where the future will lead us. And I can't wait for this new space race. It's happening. Another shout out to Aviation Daily. They're great. They have helped promote these videos a lot. So please go ahead and check out their Instagram account at Aviation Daily. Thanks guys. This week's super smart high school researcher is Lance. He's the official drone pilot for the Group One Student Ambassadors and he actually used his drone to locate the balloon in Death Valley. That's an amazing video if you haven't checked it out yet, please do. He ran his first 13 mile race last year. He really appreciates the opportunity at Back to Space to meet and work with famous people and living legend Apollo astronauts. So one of the amazing things about being a Back to Space ambassador is getting to meet people like Walter Cunningham. He's become like a grandfather to me. That's it for this week's News Flash.
Thanks everyone so much for watching. Again, I'm Danielle Dallas Russa. Make sure that you leave a comment below. What is your comment gonna be about? Is it gonna be about Apollo 7? Is it gonna be about Maya, my dog who wasn't featured in this episode? Um, and make sure you subscribe and turn that button on so you don't miss anything, so you can look cool at the bars. And also, tell your friends.